All authors declare that there are no conflicts of interest. Standard anterolateral and anteromedial portals were used for the initial inspection. After establishing the posterior lateral portal, the arthroscope is placed through the posterior medial portal viewing the epithelial and the posterior septum. The posterior septum is pushed medially by the switching stick which is placed through the posterior lateral portal. A motorized shaver is inserted through the anterior medial portal and is advanced through the intercondylar notch to the posterior medial compartment to excise the septum behind the PCL. Introducing the 30 degrees scope through the posterior transeptal portal, the medial meniscus root stem can be found hidden behind the synovial tissue and the PCL. The targeted point for the tunnel formation is not yet visualized. In this step, to visualize the root stem and the anatomical footprint of the root, the peripheral synovial tissue surrounding the PCL is partially resected. It should be done minimally to avoid iatrogenic instability. To prepare a healing bed to anchor the posterior horn, cartilage and cortical bone were removed from the posterior medial edge of the medial tibial plateau, and the cancellous bone was thus exposed. Under division through the transeptal portal, the ACL drilling guide in 110 degree setting was inserted through the posterior medial portal. A 2.4 millimeter guide pin was inserted through the guide. After checking that the pin was placed in the right location, it was withdrawn just beneath the cartilage level. Because the insertion of the ACL guide may be interfered due to the overcrowding by the sutures, we prefer to insert the guide pin prior to performing the sutures. Under visualization through the transeptal portal with a 30 degree scope, a 45 degrees curved suture hook loaded with a number 2 PTS suture material was inserted through the posterior medial portal. The posterior capsule and the medial meniscus posterior horn on the posterior medial corner were penetrated by the suture hook. The sharp tip of the suture hook was advanced from the posterior capsule into the femoral surface of the medial meniscus. At the 0.5 mm lateral to the first penetration, the posterior horn of the medial meniscus was penetrated by the same suture hook loaded with a number one nylon suture material from the tibial side to the femoral side in a vertical direction. Using the shuttle relay technique, the second suture of the nylon was exchanged with the first suture of the PTS. At this stage, the whip running stitch involving the posterior medial capsule was completed. Using a crescent suture hook loaded with a number 2 PTS, the simple vertical suture was made penetrating the root stump 5 to 10 millimeters medial to the stump end. The crescent hook was advanced from the femur surface to the tibial surface of the medial meniscus vertically. At the 0.5 millimeters apart from the prior suture, the third suture was done using the same crescent hook and suture material. In this stage, one whip running suture and two simple vertical sutures were completed. All six strands of the PDS were retrieved out of the posterior medial portal. After completing the suture, a tibial tunnel was made through the guide pin using a 4.5 cantilated reamer. While reaming, the guide pin was blocked by a straight bone curette to avoid atrogenic damage to the posterior neurovascular bundle. The guide pin was withdrawn after reaming and the cannulated reamer was left to pass a wire loop. Through the cannulated reamer, the wire loop was advanced into the intraarticular space after which the reamer was removed. Suture retriever was inserted into the posterior medial portal through which the wire loop was retrieved. After checking all six strands of the three sutures were engaged properly within the wire loop, the wire was withdrawn out of the tibial tunnel. By pulling the ends of the suture material under adequate tension, the reduction and stabilization of the meniscus could be inspected. Under the maintenance of such adequate tension, the PDS strands were post-tied and fixed with a 3.5mm cortical screw and washer on the anterior cortex of the tibia.